Welcome, welcome back, everyone, to another episode. This is the second episode of the Coding the Chronicles podcast. I'm so excited that you tuned in. I appreciate everyone that watched the first episode. Um, again, it's available on all the platforms out there. This is new to me, so I'm new to getting this out there, but um, it's out there. And we got it started. We got it going. As you can see in today's episode, though, I am not on this episode by myself ranting and holding up random baits. Today, we actually have my first guest on the podcast today. First guest. I told you guys when I started this that I wanted to bring in all kinds of perspectives on this because I feel like this can really help, right? Like this is legit can help when you talk to people that are trying to do exactly what it is that you're trying to do or someone that's trying to get into it. It's actually <clears throat> talking to someone that got out of it. You know what I mean? Like all these type of things can really help you when it comes to what to look for, what uh, experiences that can help you. So we got a guest on today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring him in here to us now. Again, I'm because I realize that some of you guys have not, uh, may not have tuned into the first episode and have no idea what's going on. You are on the Coin of the Chronicles podcast. I'm your host, Ty. I'm known as Bassett Fierce across everything there, but I'm your host, Ty. I'm excited that you're here, and we're going to talk about bass fishing. I know it's called the Coin of the Chronicles, but we're talking co-anglers, anglers, boaters, non-boaters, riders, drivers, uh, take your pick. We're talking about everything on the podcast. With us today is Buckeye Division. Got that right? Yes, sir. Buckeye yes, sir. Division. <laughs> uh, this year he's going to be co-angler, um, and he's actually been doing it for a little bit here and been fishing for a while, guys. Me and this guy, we talk about fishing all the time. None other than Jason Riley. What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing today, hey, man? Hey, it's hey, an bro. honor to be the first guest, too. I appreciate it, Ty. I really Ab- do. Absolutely, man. <clears throat> super, super glad. Like I said, I, we were talking a little bit in our uh, meeting before um, the actual episode went, man. Like, me and Jason talk about fishing. When I get done with a derby, I'm usually sending a message. We're talking about something that happened, whether yeah. us trying to get to the tournament, whether that went great, leaving the tournament, whether that went great actual day of the tournament we do talk and come to find out we actually uh connect with a few um different people on there that we that we talk to that we're having a conversation with just um i feel like the fishing community is it, it's small relative to like a lot of other communities out there so it's kind of yeah. tight knit when you meet somebody they probably know somebody that you know to know somebody that you know and y'all probably fished against each other with each other so i think it's really cool when you have someone that you can talk to um definitely and talk about for fishing so got them on kind of wanted to build on the first episode if you didn't watch it be sure to go back and check that out spotify amazon apple podcast wherever you get your podcast at you can watch it out the first episode like i said i wanted to kind of step this thing up and kind of go in order so first episode we talked about how to be a co-angler some people don't even literally know how to get into tournaments you'd be surprised at how many times i get that question how do i fish a tournament and i'm like you know with me i've been fishing for a while so i'm like what do you mean, how do you fish a tournament? Like, you just got to sign up and, like, bring your rod. Like, what is, what is this? But it's a legit question. I had to think about it. Like, it's legit. Like, some people may not know. So you say you want to grow the sport. How do you grow the sport? <clears throat> Let's get some more people involved, right? Let's get them yeah. connected in there. So that's what I tried to do with the first one, talk to you about how to get into it. Now we're talking about, we got Jason, and we're going to talk about the actual tournament itself. We're, 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 well, a little bit back up, how to get into the, how to, how to get, to the tournament is what we want to talk about in today's episode, and then what we're bringing or doing once we get there. So for Jason, I know we talked a, a little bit about it. Um, getting to the tournament, we kind of want to kind of put it in a in a, a frame here. So let's say you're fishing the Buckeye Division. Where's your first event out on the Buckeye Division? Uh, we're going in a high river over there on Tanner's Creek in the uh, Indiana, well, tri-state area, kind of, oh. sort of. Ohio River is one of Jason's top five. Play- okay, I'm lying. Look, <laughs> I'm lying already. I, I don't want to do that. Nope. Um, so we got Not that Jason. place, man. They said in Ohio River they have a very, uh, very interesting relationship. But Jason, um, so if you're going to the first term, we just want to kind of, kind of address it. So you, you looked at the schedule. You signed up as a co-angler. You got yourself in there. Let's say you've done that part. Now you know the first tournament's on the Ohio River. So we want to kind of break down how we're getting into that. So tell us uh, just, I guess, a little bit about how you know the first stop's Ohio River. So what's your next step for you to make sure that you're prepared to get to the... And actually, I'm sorry, before we get into any of that, tell them a little bit about about yourself, man. I I mentioned you a little bit. Just tell them a little bit about yourself. You're fishing, like how long you've been fishing, what uh, 
may, you know, maybe something that you like to do when it comes to fishing. Before we get into the, the actual nitty gritty, just a little bit about you, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I'm born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. I've um, been fishing since I was a kid. Uh, my father got me into fishing. He used to do tournament fishing down in Florida. He fished with the Homestead Hog Hunters, and he has a ton of trophies. I'm just trying to fill the shoes. <laughs> right, so I've been fishing right. my whole life. Um, I'm a finesse fisherman predominantly. I do have a few bait casters. I'm trying to branch out, as you know. With fishing, it's something where you can never not learn enough. There's always a new technique. There's always new technology. There's always new gear, you know. And I know a lot of people nowadays with the economy the way it is aren't really trying to spend the money. And there's ways around it where you can – get a little extra money on extra side gigs and I'll get into that later and um, get the money to get the gear, to get the money, to get the tournament fees, etc. So, but yeah, um, love football, did football, did track and field in high school, just a tidbit. And, uh, but yeah, that's me. Uh, like I said, predominantly a finesse, a finesse fisherman. I'll pick up a spin and ride any day, of, uh, any day of the week. Um, it's just, uh, I don't know. I just love a Senko. I love a Texas rig. I just, I'm basic, man. I just okay. really, when it comes to fishing, I'm real simple. And predominantly, I do fish for small women being in Cleveland. I, all I fish is Lake Erie. You'll catch me drop shot and throwing a net rig and just whacking them left and right. There you go. Okay. So let me <clears> ask you this, because I, I have a, a brother um, that fishes, and he only throws spinning rods. I don't care what he's Okay. Doing. He throws <laughs> a frog with 65-pound braid spinning rod. It don't matter. <laughs> he's throwing a spinning rod. And I've, okay. I've tried to talk to him about bait casters. He's got kids. And my brother, I, I love him. He's actually one of the reasons why I got into fishing himself because he used to tell me about, man, I love going fishing, going fishing, showing me all these fish, pictures of fish and stuff. And I'm like, all right, man, come on. I, I don't I don't fish. I, I'm not trying to fish. Like, I, let's go play ball. Like, I'm not trying. I wasn't trying to get into it. I wasn't trying to hear it. And then finally picked it up, and I, I ain't looked back since. I done forgot to put the basketball in the shed. Like, I'm fishing now. That's what I'm doing now. So, <laughs> But he only throws spinning rods. So are you kind of, like, he has a system where he's, I mean, he can almost outcast me anywhere we go with that spinning rod. And I don't, I don't care what I do to dial my stuff. He's getting a little bit farther than I am. And he's pretty, he enjoys that fact that he's like getting the distance <laughs> out there because he does like he can hit some stuff and like, but that's what he does. Do you do, or did you grow up with that? Like you're throwing anything on a Carolina rig. It don't matter. Like you're throwing on a spinning rod and just. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so. Predominantly growing up, I did. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to share. I threw all I had was fairy wands, fairy wands in my arsenal. That was it. Okay, okay. I know you big time. Like, oh, I had a fairy wand. I don't know. It's just something about the drag system that gets me. It is. Um, yeah. I like hearing it screech, dude. I, I don't yeah. care what's on the line, dude. If I can get a green okay. fish, a brown fish, screech, even a sheephead off of Erie, man. I just love hearing the drag system screech. Okay. Um, I picked up bait casters probably about... I want to say two years ago or so. I can't recall quite, but I'm I'm loving them too, dude. I'm you know that's predominantly what I'm using for my Texas rig now. I got a Daiwa Tatula. Um, I don't know the ratio off the top of my head on uh I think it's a seven. God, I don't even know like a seven two or something like that. Just okay. for flipping Texas rig. I'm in Ohio. I'm not down in Florida. <laughs> I'm fishing <laughs> you know Indian Lake, Ohio right, River. Right, right. Nothing too mosquito creek reservoir. I'm not fishing nothing too crazy. I can get away with a seven footer with the uh, dial with the tool on there. So okay. um I use straight fluorocarbon on it. Um, like I said, in certain circumstances, I would definitely switch that to braid going down south, messing with that thick matted stuff. And you got it. When you when you're in certain areas, you gotta put on braids. You gotta be able to rip through that stuff and rip that bass right out of that uh hole when he's deep in the matted grass. Um, but yeah. Okay. No, predominantly I'll uh, use a fairy wand, but I do have a few bait casters, which I do okay. enjoy. I use them for uh, predominantly flipping, jigging, you know, flipping and pitching the jig or a Texas rig, uh, spinner bait, big spinner baits, big swim baits. I'm starting to, I haven't started to build a dedicated swim bait rod. Actually, my buddy Jay got me a a big boy in there. I seven something, but uh, but yeah, I, I think they're um, they're needed. Yeah. I feel like they're definitely needed nowadays, especially when you, if you're traveling across the country, you have to have at least predominantly bay caches because you're going to get to lakes where you need to throw a rigs. You're going to get to lakes where you need to throw big swim bays, certain techniques you got to throw on a bigger rod like that. But um, 
if I can get away with a spinner rod, I'm going for it. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, I, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at that. I, I feel like that's one of the things that um. So you hear always hear the conversation depending on who you're talking to. Well, do you? Because I saw a video put up the other day. Do you need a five hundred dollar rod to catch a fish? Do you need a three hundred dollar rod to catch a fish? Like are these these are things? And it's like my um, my brother I was mentioning. He's adamant that you can get everything you need to catch a ten pounder at Walmart under fifty dollars and you that's the combo like that's the whole thing like he is like really kind of on that and i'm just like i agree 100 percent that you can it's just right. a matter of if i'm if i'm going to sometimes it's like so this is what you do so why not just invest in what i want to invest in for what i'm doing what i'm going to be doing so i don't want to get my stuff um i don't want to do you know like like not say i don't want to but just you like what you like, man. Some people right. drive Dodge Charger. Sure. Some people drive Nissan Pathfinder. Some people drive 97 Honda Accords. I'm the 97 Honda Accord guy. Right? Like, <laughs> so, they, like, you just you do what it is that you're going to do to be successful. And you can do, like, I think the one guy, um, what's the guy that does the Bassmaster Elite Series? He fishes with the ugly sticks. He out here um, talking about the, um, uh, God, what is his name? Uh, Matt Robinson. Robinson. Robertson. Matt, Matt, Matt Robertson. Robertson. <laughs> yeah. Get out there and get it in. Like, and honestly, some of these, um, especially some of these spinning rods, they're expensive. The real mm-hmm. spinning, the, dude, just like, man, you can sleep on my spinning pole if you want, but this sucker is dialed, and I feel every little tick that I need mm-hmm. to get that bite that I need. Sometimes it is that small little, a lot of times, well, you'll tell if it's the biggest bite I got all year, I barely felt that fish touch that bait barely felt it literally wow. just like i picked did i have a spinner rod i'm pretty sure i had no i think i, I think i did one of those days where i only okay. bought a caster but i need to throw something i normally throw on a spinner rod but i had no choice so i had to like <laughs> way off my you know, drag and everything to get it yeah. past a little distance so, <laughs> um but yeah as soon as i felt a tiny little and i was like oh okay yanked on it i'm like oh, all right man i got it yeah oh, okay come on got it you know two pounder come on that sucker put his head out the water and I about fell out, right? I'm like, Yo, <laughs> what is this? And I went to lip him and I pull him up out the water and I'm like, this is my PB for the whole year. And I literally felt, I mean, tiny little ticks. I feel like that's the important thing. I have, My feel is better when I'm using the spinner rod. For me personally, yeah, my feel definitely. is better. What I'm feeling, because I have the left hand, this is like my ultra sensitive Every, everything feels better in this left hand for me personally. I know some people like the right, but I, that left for me, I can feel. And when I get my little ticks, when that spin, when the spinning rod's in my hand, I know I'm going to feel and I'm going to get them. That bait cast, mm-hmm. sometimes I'm just setting just to set because sometimes you just catch it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just gotta, yeah, like, you are. Yeah, you have to. Nope. Uh, I can't tell, but that spinning rod, it lets you know, man. So I 100%, I'm not, I will never, ever, ever knock, especially where you're fishing at, dude. Like, I know some people that only go up there with spinning rods to the area and yeah, only you take have, yeah. four spinning. Normally, my ro- my my ro- my rotation is four baitcasters, two spinning. Everybody yeah. water. Four baitcasters, two spinning. When I go up there, it's going to be four spinning and two baitcasters. I'm swimming yeah. that thing around. I think I just need, like, that net rig, the drop shot, you know, whatever the case some yeah, weird understand. Weird yeah. JDM technique, some Tokyo, something. I'm going to do something weird like that little tiny. What's this rig I saw the other day? The Jika rig or something? I was like, I don't even know what this is. But it's it like, funny looking with the worm and it had like the, or maybe I'm thinking of something different. It looked like, it, to me, it looked like the Tokyo without that wire that comes down at the end. It, it was I got to like look that up. The little, the little, little weight on the bottom was mm-hmm. here. The 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 part came up to like here, hook hmm. came out like right here, and then it was tied to the line tie, and that was it. It was a tiny hmm. little, like they're feeding on the bottom, but not bottom bottom. They're like an inch above the bottom, and it covered that spectrum. I was like, it sounded like a short short leash drop shot, short leash almost, really yeah, short, short leash drop, drop shot, so yeah. I think that's like the for, <laughs> and I, I plan on digging into a lot of this stuff as we get deeper into the uh, episodes, but like. Every derby, I notice in particular, when you get there, it's um, it's it's uh, it's that one little thing that's different. Like I was getting smoked at the Chesapeake Bay by my boater. He, obviously, we're not competing against each other, but I just right. made your standpoint of me trying to catch a daggone fish. I couldn't catch a Period, darn, yeah. darn fish behind <laughs> this dude. He's cleaning gotcha. them, and I was like, I need something. I need a tweak on something. He's throwing the exact color. I'm throwing the color right, but nothing's happening. It's too 
the area was too thick and nasty to then go finesse. I couldn't throw a shaky hit or a drop shot in this. It'll never come mm. back. It literally was like a thick mat of like wood almost. It was like uh cattails bent over laying sideways. So you mm. couldn't you couldn't throw anything in there, but you had to get it in between the gap between the cattail and the a little bit of water and then a long giant tails behind it. You had to get it right in that one little window. And if you come in there with an eight pound, ten pound, you going I got my feelings hurt twice, right? Trying to throw up in there with some tiny junk. No, nothing but came back. So this dude, I had to I finally found the biggest rod I had, which was a seven one heavy, which was not very big at all. But I was like, we just gonna have to I'm gonna right. hit the sucker snaps and it just snap. I'm gonna have to go for it because I need a bite. So he's throwing his bait, throwing his bait, throwing his bait. I could not get bit. I went with, and I saw a video put up lately about it. Um, snuck a rattle in the gym. Snuck a rattle in my in my Texas red creature bait with a wow. three quarter ounce weight. I snuck a rattle inside the thing. Two fish back to back, and he's like, "Dude, what's happening back there?" But this is what we're digging in on the podcast. Why I'm doing the podcast because I said nothing about what I changed on my bait. He just wondered why I started catching fish. I didn't say anything. And when we got done, I was like, dude, I put a rattle in my bait. Like, I had to catch some fish. And he looked at me and was like, that's what you did. Because he knew I wasn't going to catch nothing behind him. He's good. This dude was, a, he's a stick. Like, you you see, you watch him on TV. This dude was, a, there was no way I was catching anything unless I tweaked it a little bit. I had to make a little. And a rattle's not really that big of a tweak, I think, in the scope of. Because a lot of people were using them. I wasn't using them. Like, the Googans came out with that Ned rig with the rattle in the tail. I actually have a few. I'm not gonna lie. Dude, I've actually like, caught on them. I've, they're 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 great. I'm they're great. Like the little little deal, man. Because everyone's throwing the TRD, right? And, and that guy's smoking them behind you, and then you hear about the old dudes that put their sinko on the deck and then step on it and then roll it up and back that catch fish versus you just pulling the sinko out the pack and throwing it up like that. Mm-hmm. They bash it up and get all the the salt and that, whatever released out in the air. They do that, like roll it on the carpet and stomp on it. And I'm like. Why would you do that? That thing is eight dollars a pack. Like, why are you immediately pulling it out and destroying it? But that dude out catches you seven to one that day, and you're like, "No, oh, okay, old man. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm gonna listen to you. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna just shut up and take these old, old, old lessons that I need to take." But um, I think I feel like that's the key for us as co-anglers on that. So um, we got a little bit about, and again, I apologize. I'm trying to make sure I keep keep on building on what we're doing. So we talk about. We got bait, we got mods, we got things that we want to do. We can get into that a little bit more specific to what we're doing. But um, so let's say back to our original deal. We got a little bit idea what's going on. Um, you know that you're going to the Ohio River. So right. You want to kind of talk about your steps that now you know. So we're talking everything from there's work involved, there's lodging involved, there's uh, driving there involved, there's obviously the distance, takeoff time weather possible weather delay where you could get there and then you don't have a tournament then you need another day to stay for a one day tournament and you wasn't all that kind of stuff so just kind of take us through what you what you do kind of when you see the schedule what's your what's your what's your next move that you're trying to that you're you would do research i'm going straight okay. to youtube <laughs> okay all right, i'm going to go. exhaust all of my that's how i found you ironically Exhaust all my options into YouTube. I mean, you can't just go to one channel. I get it. You want to go get the best video out there. You probably go to the highest channel. Oh, he's got 500 subs. He knows what he's talking about. Not necessarily. You have to go to every single video you can find. You got to spend hours at night when you have free time and you know you have nothing to do. Go type in... Ohio River bass fishing and just exhaust your options. You want to completely exhaust them to the point where you're sitting up there passing out, falling asleep, watching the Ohio River bass fishing videos. You want to get that well educated. Like you have to. That's the first step. You got to do some kind of research. You can look up maps, water depths, cricks, but at the end of the day, you're a coin bird. Right. You can right, throw right. him suggestions if he comes to you asking for suggestions. Because if you come to him first saying, hey, I found this crick back up in so-and-so, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. go there. He's going to look at you like, right. I got a few spots. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> that goes right on over. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is nothing to talk about. So 
Know your place is a coin. I hate to say that. I know it sounds rude, but it's his vote. You're a guest. He's a partner. That's what I say. I put the quotes uh-huh. on it. Quotes <laughs> on it. <laughs> he, he may not see. You may not act like a partner during the whole dirt, but he's a partner. So you're partners of the day. Whatever. You kind of gotta just wing it. You gotta gotta go with what he has planned for the day. That's what it's all about. So after I'm done doing my research, I'll get to the hotel. Like you know, they'll get to the draw your boat. 71 flight three blah 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 cool hey so how'd it go i don't ask what he threw you don't want to ask that just ask where you were where what kind of water were you fishing were you fishing shallow or deep did you get a good top water bite going okay then say hey um how was the water clarity mm-hmm. how was the wind how was practice oh i, I stuck a few i've shook a few off oh i got him flipping shallow and then i went deep but I'm, we're gonna stay mostly shallow tomorrow. Okay, cool. That's all I need. I don't it, don't don't it. sit up and ask him if he was throwing a spinner bait. Don't sit up and ask him what particular top water lure he was throwing. Just ask him where the weather, how he did, and then keep it simple. Be like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And if he throws, maybe he you might get a good guy. Be like, hey, yeah, I, he might tell you everything. Then you're right, gonna get guys right. that tell you right. one to two things and click. So. You kind of got to get a feel for your guy and you might be able to pay, plan out a whole day with your guy. It just depends who you draw. So I can't sit up and say you couldn't throw a suggestion his way because he might be like, hey, you got any spots, buddy? It just depends on your person. So then after that, you go make the suggest. I'm sorry, you go make the um, adjustments or tweaks to your gear if you needed to make any because I've everybody's been there like, hey, I'm going deep. You're like, oh. I got everything set up shallow. Yeah, I, like, oh, oh I got, okay, I got bye. Six on and two what do you mean? You feel me? Like, yeah, <laughs> so now I got to put on a Carolina ring. Now right, I got to put right. on a drop shot. Now I got to get a deep diving crank. Whatever. So make your adjustments. Go to bed. Get some good. Try to get some good rest. And that's pretty much it. You go out there, do the best you can, and just simply want to sit up and pace yourself. Don't let your mind defeat you. Stay focused. Make sure you're making every accurate cast. Watch where he's throwing. And if he's throwing a chatter dunk, go behind him throwing an underspin. Go behind him throwing a Senko flip. Do the opposite. Play like it's opposite day. Mm-hmm. He's throwing a chatter dunk, throw a Senko. He's throwing a Senko, throw a Texas rig. He's throwing a uh, Texas rig, throw a jig. He's throwing a jig, uh, throw a drop side. Just, just. You're fishing for two totally different fish. He's typically fishing for some biggins. Let's just be honest. They're always fishing for bigs. They're swinging for the fences. They want the big boys. You're fishing for scraps and leftovers and fish that were maybe big and decided, "Um, that's too much for me, bro. I'm tired. And he might see your underspin and be like, oh, man, that's kind of tasty. You know, take his bite and there you go. So you kind of got to go about that and just that's how you go about your day. You can't beat yourself up because you're not catching them. I was at Indian Lake. I didn't do good in the beginning, dude. I sink. I was skipping under docks, making accurate casts, leaning under, doing everything I could to make casts. I had a nip. I knew it was a bluegill. So late in the day, I think I was flipping. Oh no, he was in the pad frogging, and I was. I was like, "Hey, can I fish the other side of the bank?" He said, "Go right ahead. I don't care. All right, cool." I was like, "Man, screw this." I just decided to tie on the single, kept the single on the rest of the day because I think I had just broke off my Texas rig. I was mad. I was through. I said, "I want to go home in my head." I said, "I'm done." I said, I'm man, I'm gonna just tie on a single throw it the rest of the day. I'm throwing it. He's over there. I'm like, you know, I got my rod. I'm just... I'm like, oh, that feels kind of funny. So I wind down, but mm, this has got tension. So I was like, mm, let me go ahead and see what's up. So I set up and I get a three pounder. We net him, I get him in, I'm happy. I'm like, okay, cool. Yes. Dude, as soon as you get that fish, put him in the well, go throw your bait right back in there. Cause guess what? There's probably another fish not that far away. So I threw it back in the same vicinity. Dropped in, got the little thing. I think it was half a pound. I think I got three six for the day cash check. So that's pretty much it. I mean, you got to pace yourself. You can't give up even when things are looking down. Like, I broke off, dude. I was ready to go home. I was like, screw this. Like, leave me alone. Like, I don't want to be bothered. He's like, he kept saying to, he's a good guy. He's like, it's your turn to catch him. It's your turn. And I didn't call him. I was like, just give me a second. Like, so, <laughs> but that's pretty much how you want to go about it, man. You got to keep your head high. It's going to be tough times, dude. Some days you may not catch them because you just weren't around them. Sometimes right. fishing is a timing thing. You got to take consideration. These fish are largemouth typically constantly move. They either roam in packs of one to four, I'd say, give or two, or about two to four or so on the bank. You smallmouth, you can go get a school. You can go find 30 of them. They all going to eat. Mm-hmm. 
They mm-hmm. all gonna eat. But now you're dealing with a co-op situation. That's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. <laughs> but with that, you wanna be um vocal. And that's something I I think I felt like I kind of struggled with this hey. year and the year before. I wouldn't speak. You know what I'm saying? I would let things slide and I would be all right, like one dude, I don't speak on his name, but I was on the Howard River, my truck broke down, Maysville. We were literally right next to the fish on the bank. I could literally jump out of the water and jump on the bank. You shouldn't be that, in my opinion, you should not be that close to the bank, number one, because more than likely, you're right on top of the fish. Right, right, exactly. Right, you right. can't be that close to the bank. You got to back off. And if you're up there, they see you. It's murky. They see some big shadow casting over. Your sun is out. They're going to see some sort of shadow. Mm-hmm. So you can't be up on the bank. Like, in my opinion, we should have backed off. And we would have had more areas to fish, but it is what it is. You know, I, I got a little spot. He wasn't a keeper, fell off right there. And I just let it be. I just kept fishing. I did have one opportunity. And I will say this. You will have usually one opportunity for one keeper or a fish that somewhat is a keeper. And I was drop shot on a dock. I didn't think nothing of it. I was just, I was out of it. Rogers bends. I said, oh, no. I, I didn't get a good hook set. I was just, did some quick, wimpy little, mm, and, I had him at the boat. He was pumping. It might have been a good spot or a small because I had a drop shot with a uh, some little uh, worm and and he got off at the boat. So that that goes back to being focused. You have to stay focused at all times because the moment you go in La La Land, guess what? Everything right. else, your, your hand in La La Land, your legs in La La Land, right. you are out of it. You are no longer fishing on that boat. You are gone. So I was like, oh, oh, I'm fishing. Oh, and I just messed up. But you got to learn from your mistakes and keep it pushing. Got you. So you definitely said a few things there um, that I think we can um, we can touch on. One in particular, I like that you mentioned the uh, the prep after the phone call. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the key because I feel like sometimes I know with me early, I would stress myself out because I would get all packed. Then I get that phone call that mm-hmm. the dude's saying we're doing X Y Z. So now I'm scrambling around. Now I'm getting back to the bag. I'm over here messing with this, changing it. Oh man, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Or I get like I said the guy that says nothing. And I'm like, okay, well, so people can be, um, and just have something for everything, I guess. He's like, we just going to go fishing. I mean, we know that, man. We signed up for a tournament, right? Like, come on, bro. Like, this is what we're doing. Um, so I'm I like, that, okay, I love it, right? Just keep open mind. But, um, oh, man, man, sometimes. But I do I do like that um, that you mentioned. And then you say with the, the prep. It's so it, – it's crazy how many phone calls, messages that I'll get of somebody that says, hey, I'm fishing the Potomac River, and I'm watching – nine of your videos on the Potomac River. And I'm like, huh, okay, well, that's <laughs> great. Like, you got any specific questions? I probably won't answer those, but I'll tell you, like, a general vicinity if you want some. I'll gladly talk to people, and it's funny because they, I guess they think I'm not going to say something to them or I won't tell them something. Mm-hmm. Like, if you come into my town and you're trying to catch some fish, and I'm not, <laughs> and, and hold on, if I'm in it, I'll probably share, like, 63% of the information right. if I'm in the same derby. But if I'm not, it depends. If I know you, I'll probably tell you everything. I, I'll i get, man, there's some guys that I don't know if they'll ever say it, but I'll give them the bait out of my bag on the water or before the water. I'll be like, yo, come meet me here. I will give you. Like my buddy, he was fishing a derby on Lake, uh, I think it was Lake Anna out here. And he's like, dude, Ty, so you be catching them out there, man. What are you throwing? I said, look, I will. I'm not going to write it. I'm weird about that, man. I won't write something <laughs> down in a text message. Because yeah. I, I don't want that message to be screenshotted and sent to all your friends, right? That's why I'm weird about it. I don't want that. But I said, if you meet me, I'll give you a pack of the baits. I'll give you two packs of baits. That we're going to Lake Anna. You want to go to Lake Anna. I'll give you two baits. You throw one on the drop shot and one you skip underneath the docks. I guarantee you won't leave there without a fish. I guarantee you. And I met this dude at 7-Eleven at 9-15. This is my buddy. Matter of fact, um, real good dude. I'll, I'll give him a shout out here as well. Um, okay. But Tommy. <laughs> Buddy Tommy, man, that's my guy. He watches the videos too. He's tuned in. He's got his own YouTube channel. Tommy Tackle, man, 540 Fishing. That's our little town. That's our area code, 540 Fishing, right? That's my guy, man. He said he's fishing. He's got to go out. He wants to take his kid out. He want to have a good day, whatever the case may be. I'm going to give you exactly what I got because I want you to be successful. I want you to get out there and catch these fish. But then I also will always add that throw all this junk out the window and just go fishing if it ain't going down the way I'm saying it's going down because that's just that's just fishing. I don't know. I have 100% confidence in it. And it, I get a lot of times that question like, Ty, why are you so confident when you go to some of these places? And I'm like, they're either going to bite or they're not. I fish with too many people now. Mm-hmm. I've been like, if you look at the, the, the record, 
I've been on the Potomac with Adrian Avena, Gray Buck, every local hammer that you can possibly know that'll beat everyone to death on the Potomac that lives right up the street from me. They'll beat any pro that thinks about putting his boat in the water because these dudes live out there. They're out there. They're the river rats. We mentioned them yeah. um, in our pre them. They are out there. They lit. They check everything every day. They'll tell you the water color and the exact creek, whatever you're trying to go, they already know because they've already been there. Um, but when you get that, when you go out that many times, <laughs> like I mentioned when we were talking a little bit earlier, when I'm listening to you talk about Lake Erie, you you know what you're doing when you get out there. You know, oh, you yeah, know yeah. that obviously <laughs> kinda... there's something to learn, right, every time you go because this is fishing. This is the reason why I love fishing. Because you're always going to learn something. I don't care what you know, what you think you know. When you mm-hmm. get out there, it's going to challenge you every single time. So when you do that, when you have that confidence, it's like, I'm going to show up. And I got probably five to six baits in my head. Just saying for all the corners, for you guys listening, right? Make sure you listen to this stuff. We're giving some some stuff out to you, man. Um, some good tips right here. If you go, you got to have those five or six baits you're going to throw. And you mentioned one about the boater, too. That's the other thing I wanted to mention. You mentioned the boater when they're um, telling you about what you may not need to ask them right. to throw, but how do you find out? They lay all their rods on the deck, dude. Mm-hmm. Guys don't once once. So I've had guys keep everything in the boat locker until every other boat goes away. When all the other guys competitors are gone, then they pull out their rods. So you get like that fifteen minutes with them, depending on how early you guys leave, where they pull out every rod out the rod locker. When they pull them out, right then you ain't got to say a word to the boater. Look at what that's up there. They don't pull out junk because they know when they get to their first spot, mm-hmm. they've got to start launching. They ain't got time to figure it out by then. They got to so you know that anything on that front deck, they probably caught a fish on in practice. So when I get to every single tournament, I say, hey, how you doing? I had a thing <laughs> last year, too, where I gave them the tip money up front, which I changed because that got interesting. I ain't even trying to get into that. Okay, right okay, That's okay, a, fair enough. Be, I'm like, dude, I, I will – you see some of my rants on the, the money topic, bro. I'm not, I'm not shutting down. So I'm oh, trying. man. But I'm like, when they pull them out, I say my greeting. Hey, how you doing? Everything's good. You know, I'm looking forward to having a good day with you, man. Um, I know you mentioned that we might be going, uh, might be up on the bank a little bit. You know, I'm ready to rock. Um, and I always make sure to tell them, hey, look, I know sometimes you get in a boat with someone that you feel like, this is when I'm on my game. If I'm tired, I ain't had no coffee. I, ain't, I don't yeah. get coffee, but I'm tired. I probably don't say any of this. I just sit there and I'm just quiet. I want to go fishing. But um, if I'm actually like paying attention and locked in, I'll tell them that, look, I'm that guy that wants us both to have a good day. Okay, so don't look at me as the one that's trying to cast over your shoulder and catch that six-pounder. I said, you catch that six-pounder. Right. Let me get the four. Okay, right. You get the six. Let me get the four. Unless I said, we both need to come back and have a good day. And I will do everything I can to make sure that we have a good day. Has that cost me sometimes? It has. Because they then think that I'm like that little bit more aggressive guy is going to get those fish now because he's casting everywhere and he's doing all this and the third. But guess what? When they get done, like us co-anglers talk about the boaters, the boaters talk about co-anglers as well. It's a universal. Everybody does. So when they mention me, (laughs) now they're like, yeah, I fished with that tie, that Bass and Furious guy. He fished a little slow and gave me a lot more casting angles than I thought he was going to do. But, um, you know, he's a good... He's a good dude, man. I'm not I'm not mad at him or anything. And that is like so when I see them again, it's all love. There's no no issues. Now when I've had like a bad, bad day, they can tell. Cause I it's pretty I don't hide my emotions very well on my face when yeah. I'm mad. It's right there for you to see. I <laughs> you're asking me questions, I'm not responding. Like I have these dudes, they want to make these conversations, but I notice how the boat keep nosing up to everything and I can't get no angles. <laughs> I at this point, I don't care about your kids. I don't care about your dog. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Look, yeah. Bro, I don't care about none. your wife didn't. I don't, mm. I don't care about none of this, man. Shut up and turn this boat <laughs> to the other side. <laughs> so instead oh, of saying man. that, I just don't say anything. I just sit there. And like you said, you mentioned being vocal a little bit. So yeah, what I've been working on is trying to verbalize yeah. that without being an obnoxious maniac. Just saying, and I know when I talk to some of my buddies, they're like, Dude, I just asked him to turn the boat. And I'm like, really? <laughs> That's what you and I'm like, and this dude, like, this dude's cashing checks every time he turn around, he's cashing a check. He's like, I just tell him to, to turn the boat. And I'm like, huh, maybe I just instead of back here harboring grudges, maybe I just talk a little bit, right? Just be like, so hey, yeah. look, I noticed that you that you nosed into this dock, and it's really hard for me to cast on this side. Do you right. think that once you're 
you know, <clears throat> get your time, but let me, maybe let me get a shot at. There's been some times where I've had a boulder. I had one guy in particular. He pulled up to an area, made like six, seven casts, mm-hmm. power pole down, sat down on the bottom of the floor oh. for 15 minutes, and I just kept casting out the back. He wasn't casting out the front. I was casting out the back and kind of to the side. But mm-hmm. the juice was clearly in front of us. He was throwing a Texas Red Creature bait. I could have came behind him with a drop shot shaky or something like that. But he's just mm-hmm. literally sitting in the floor, retying FG knots, pulling line out the thing. Any other co-angler in their right mind probably would have just pitched up front and tried to hit every single tree room. Oh, geez, I sat yes. there and just kept casting the nothing out the back. And I'm like, this is the the second, third biggest tournament of my life. I feel wow. like maybe I should probably go a little bit harder than what I'm doing right now. But just, I, I it just, it never clicked to me to just say like, hey, uh, you're not fishing right now. Can Do you I? mind if I pitch up here real quick and try to get something? And the dude was a very nice guy. He probably mm-hmm. would have been like, go ahead for it, buddy. But when I never asked and I didn't look like I was upset, I wasn't huffing and puffing. He just, so he got up. He didn't even make any more casts. He got up and was like, you ready to go? And we pulled off. And I never made a cast at that juice spot. Oh, he just rolled. So I literally man. fixed that whole stretch up. I can't do that again. Like, no. I, like I cost myself, was there a fish there? Nobody knows. He hit yeah. everything. He hit every corner of every dock with his bait. But still, we all know one could have swam up there real quick. A lot of times I notice when you pull up at first, they'll swim away. Mm-hmm. You give it a few minutes, they'll come right they'll back come up right under back. there. And you can try to get that one. I've had that happen multiple times. I've had happen where, um, oh, the other thing, last thing you mentioned was um, switching up the baits. So yeah. a lot of times, I've been saving this. I've been saving this since I first started wanting to do this podcast. I've been saving this. The boaters... Every interview you have with a boater, they always say, for a co-angler, the number one tip, don't throw what I'm throwing. That's what every boater says. Don't throw what I'm throwing. Now, my question, why do y'all throw what we throw when we start catching? Why does the boater immediately mm. cut off their bait and throw what you throw? I had that happen to me four times last year where I'm, I caught a fish on a crankbait. Three and a half pounder. I get him up to the boat. The boater looks like he's feeling some type of way because I caught the fish and he had caught none all, all for the whole morning. Before I got that fish out the water, the boater had cut off his bait, tied on the exact same color crankbait, pitched at the exact same spot, and he catches a pound and a half fish. I hadn't even got my stuff out of there. He paid attention to exactly what I did. The you exact know color. Sniped his bait off instantly and tied it on and made a cast so my question is y'all all they're all and i'm not and for any boaters listening to this podcast I'm no shade I'm not trying to <laughs> I, i'm not that guy okay don't be coming no for me for all this but I'm, I'm asking their question is their their statement is don't throw what we're throwing so when i start catching them a lot of them are getting the boat they're like ty tell me how to catch them today buddy show me how to catch them today they're literally waiting till i catch them and when i catch them they tie on I was whacking them on a fluke. The boater threw everything in his tackle box at these fish. Couldn't get nothing to bite. I had a fluke on. Literally probably my 11th cast. Two pounder. And he's like, all right. Next cast. Two pounder. He's like, dude, what's happening back there? Next cast. Pound and a half. He's like, dude, you got to chill, bro. You got to chill. Like He's like, I can't even get the net for you fast enough. You catching too many fish. He tied on my bait. I never got another bite. He threw the exact same bait that I was throwing. I never got another bite mm. after that. Like for the next three hours. And I, I did get two more. I switched up baits, but I got two more. He top 10. He caught 15 pounds. He lit them up on the bait that I showed us how to catch them on. Oh, that's so depressing, is, dude. You know, for me, as a person, I'm happy for him. I'm. He asked me for the bait. He said, dude, what are you throwing? I said, I'm throwing a fluke. I said, but I got a little bit of weight. I tied some lead wire around my weight, and that's how I was throwing my fluke. So it was going subsurface. That's what I did. He had a little weighted hook. He put a weighted hook, tied his fluke. He lit him up. I'm cheering him on. I offered him half the flukes in my bag. I'm like, dude, I'm not trying to catch five and you zero. I said, that's not why I'm here. I'm not here for us to do that. But, again, did that cost me, man? Look, I went for, I got a yeah. check. Back. I mean, don't get me wrong. I got a check, right? Like, I cashed. But mine was like a 16. His was like a top 
seven. I got like the hundred ninety dollars. He got like six hundred. If I yeah. never say what I'm throwing, I could have got the next. He the first fish he caught. I said two and a half, two and a half pound a quarter. First fish he caught was almost a four. In the exact same spot that I caught the two. Uh, so you know the big punch was there. He caught a four and another three and a half and another three and a half. I think late in the day he switched to a shaky head. This is the thing. The way I handle the way I talk about it, the way I deal with it in the boat, the way I'm dressing it now, he's still a good dude. I still talk to him all the time. Whenever I go to his town, he's supposed to show me how to get out here and catch these fish on his body of water if he's free. Oh, okay. So it's a good rela- – I had no hard feelings, no ill will, but I just – it burns me up when I hear the boaters tell us not to throw. My BFL weird, man, because I think, like you said, you said it best when you said uh, adapt. I think you said it best. It don't. You can. There's like a general rule you should follow, and then you mm-hmm. just gotta throw it away, man. You just gotta adapt to whatever that situation, that moment. That guy talks about all the time fishing that moment, whatever it is. So in that moment, it was the same bait. Nine out of ten other tournaments, it's not going to be the same bait. I'm no, never going to no. catch the fish he's going for. Like you said, I'm going for the, the pound and a half. Right. Hoping to get a six-pounder lucky because he made a bad cast. He had a backlash or something. I'm hoping, like cause you, you said it with the opportunities. Mm-hmm. You're going to get that one opportunity. Like when I won at Kerr, I had one opportunity. My boater made a cast up a little bit farther. He left a stump or a brush uh, bush. He left a bush right there. And I was like, Mistake. Uh, you're up here. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm going to make this pitch. I make that pitch. Mm-hmm. Find that spinner bait. Do, 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 do. Boom. Boom. Smoke. And it's a four mm-hmm. pounder. Comes off with the spinner bait flying out of his mouth. And the boater slides the net underneath. Got it. Like, Ooh. it's in the, right? like, Oh, so this is a backflip for him. <laughs> he's still top five, though. Like, that's the thing. He still, the, the area was that juicy where we both did really. I, he got a six or a five. I think he got a six. He might got a six or a five. He wanted a trophy. I think they gave a trophy to five. He got a six. But, like, right there, he's throwing a chatterbait. I'm throwing a spinnerbait. Same thing you said. We switched it up. We're throwing different. I tried throwing a chatterbait behind him. Couldn't catch nothing. I mean, mm-hmm. nothing. It was a complete, utter waste of time. He was flipping, jackhammer, thunder cricket, jackhammer, thunder cricket. He just kept rotating. He was lightening them up. I caught, like, the first few. He lit them up after that. It was kind of that. It was that day. But that day, that moment, opposite baits. Other day, same bait. Other day, opposite baits. Other day, like you said, you're just not on them. <laughs> or you're yeah. on the bait with them. You're, you're up there with them. <laughs> y'all are hanging out together. Like, yeah, like, literally. Hey, what you doing? Like, that's, yeah, that's sick. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that, <laughs> you know man. Saying? Get it. So I feel like, man, I feel like you're definitely, definitely helping um, some people with, with this, man, with this, uh, where we're going. So I feel like um, the preparation, I feel like preparation's – going to be key. Adapting is going to be key. Those are big things for us. Um, then we do want to kind of touch on just a little bit, uh, like for distance for you. So how far are you from, let's say like your first stop, we'll go, well, cause I know Lake Erie is pretty close to you, but we'll go, what's yeah. the farthest one you got? So we can kind of help people with this travel side of it. Just a Maysville, little. Kentucky. I think I got like a oh, four, four hour drive. Four hours. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere around there, about four hours, somewhere around the ballpark. So four hours. So for that one, um, for for me, I'm staying in a hotel. With for sure, for sure, hotel. For sure. Okay, so you right, have to. So we sign up. We got a hotel. Um, now, car. <laughs> no, for me, look, man. look I uh, you know I'm I, for a while I had a 2015 <laughs> Dodge Ram that had oh, zero man. miles on it that I could drive everywhere. I had no issues. It was good to go. Them days not here no more. Sold that. Now we driving the 04 Ram. That I don't feel like you get five miles to the gallon. So I'm mm. not driving that four hours, right? That's like nine hundred dollars in gas. I'm not doing that. So for <laughs> me, my thing is when I'm doing the driving distances, I'm usually renting something right now. That's where I'm at. We got okay. a little with Enterprise. My wife, I, I send her the information of where I'm trying to go and what time we'll be back. She hops online. Um, because where she works at, she has the discount. Or I work at, I don't have the discount. So she hops online. That's she pretty cool. The rental, and then we run the rental. Especially if I got a three or four hour drive, I'm getting the the, the rental. Because honestly, I, I I sometimes trust my cars, but I more so don't trust my skills on the road two and a half hours away trying to figure out a problem. Yeah, I okay. guess if that makes sense. I don't want to try to figure out nothing. So I will rent something. Right now, I do have two pretty solid vehicles, so I may drive one of them up to, like, three hours what I feel comfortable 
driving. But um, and then you'll go to just, a rental. Then then I then if it's oh. past that, if I know like when I go to Lake Murray, it's right. a rental. One hundred percent. That's a seven hour drive. It's gonna right. be rental. and I'm gonna rent. I'm gonna burn that rental up before I burn up my my car. I'm gonna just drive that thing all across town. Now for you, do you are you driving? Now you know you're. Let's say you are. We determine you get in a hotel, right? And you're just gonna drive. You're driving there um, to get there. Like what? What are? What's your typical method? You got a something you can drive to get there? Yeah, my daily driver. Um, okay. she gave me a headache this year. I actually had to end my season early because of her. But they only had one other owner, so I had to take in consideration. Okay, well, this just came full circle. Hub bearings. Uh, Brakes, shoes, pads, calipers, just regular maintenance stuff that just came full circle. You know, one other owner is the 05. Um, you have to take consideration what kind of car you got. How many past owners have? Do you have the car facts on it? Do you know who worked on it? Was it an incident? I mean, I hate to say it. You do have to take these things into consideration when you're traveling out of state. I mean, as I unfortunately had to endure this year, I had to tow my 2005 Toyota 4Runner. Cause I couldn't find a mechanic and I wasn't really in the mindset or even in the mood to try to sit down there and put some vice grips and get that brake line back working to run it yeah, back up yeah, to yeah. Cleveland. I'm right, good. Right. Okay. At that point, I'm furious. I zeroed. I got a little spot. Couldn't keep. I'm done. I'm done with the whole day. Done with the car at this point. Uh-huh. And you got to, I had to pay $800 to get a tow back to Cleveland, Ohio. So let that be said. So uh, I'm blessed with the career I have. So, um, I was able to take care of it, but at the end of the day, you got to take in consideration what you, what kind of wheels you got. Like before you even get, I hate to say it, like I, I wouldn't get in the BFLs comfortably unless you got a rental, a rental deal like Ty's going that route. Certain lengths he just chalks it up, does a rental, or get a good running car. I mean, that's all I can say. Like try to make sure you do some kind of pre-trip, take it to Midas, take it to. Firestone paid a little fifty, sixty dollars. You know, if you worried about money, go DoorDash real quick. Make right. that fifty, sixty dollars. Take that fifty, sixty. Go to Midas. Go to Firestone. See what's up. They're they're gonna be like get probably X Y Z run with it. Take in consideration some of the stuff you can ride on for a little bit mm-hmm. and let it be. Some of the stuff, if it's something serious and you take it somewhere else, and they say the same thing. Okay, then. More than likely, it's probably true. Right. So take take things with a grain of salt when it's coming. At, if you're mechanically inclined, great, yeah. then you're good. But that's one thing. That's We're talking about the average individual that's probably not mechanically inclined that wants to become a, a, a co-angler. So make sure your car's straight and just go about it. Just watch your P's and Q's. If you got like a Honda or some kind of like sedan, you're good on fuel for the most part. Yeah. Key. Um. If you got a truck, you got a truck. You got a V6 or higher. You know what's up. Right, right. <laughs> it's really you no know, way. You know what you're getting into. Yeah. yeah there's no right. way around it. Um. Yeah. Fuel get cost. Get a credit card. That too. He's not lying. You got a decent job. Get a credit card. Run up the yeah. fuel through the credit card. I just said that's a good way to maintain. That's a good way to keep your cost in where you can yeah. see your cost, especially if you pay it right off. If you got exactly up on it. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, and if you really that hard on for money. Just DoorDash. They got DoorDash. They got Amazon. Um, you can deliver Amazon package out of your car. You can do uh, Grubhub, Uber. There's so many different methods of making quick cash to cover the cost of the tournament. If you're right. really stressing, you got a job, you're worried about bills, do your thing. Take the Instead of taking the day off, take that day, go DoorDash the whole day. Mm-hmm. From sun up. To Sunday, make sure it's on, if you can, make sure it's on a Friday. Friday, pay a little more better. Do it on a Friday. Do it on a weekend. People off. Everybody don't want to cook Friday. Everybody tired. They just want to relax. They want to order some food and go to bed. So just do it on a day you know you can capitalize on. Run out there. Do the money. Maybe break in, hopefully, almost $200. You cool. That go... Maybe that's your room and board. Maybe you go on Priceline because right. that's what I use. Right, <laughs> Maybe right. you go on Priceline. Your tournament's in two weeks. Do it again next week. Hey, there's your your hotel paid for. Now you didn't even have to compromise money from your daily uh, income, your daily right. job. Right. So it's ways to make money to compensate for things like hotel fees, uh, fuel costs. Like Ty said, go get a credit card if you haven't one. If you don't have one already, um, it's ways around it that you can make. Or wiggle your way around it to get to the tournament, basically. So makes sense. You can you definitely. Yeah. Want to so just take your time, 
assess the situation, do what you got to do to get it done. Like, you know, I, like I said, I'm fortunate to have the job that I have, but at the same time, you can fish tournaments and still work a regular job, but you are going to have to pick up a day. You're going to have to pick up a side gig. You're going to have to do these things to pay for these tournaments. Cause like he said, you're going out here. Chances are you're going to be headed back home, bro. <laughs> right. I, just, no, no, no. I mean, I hate no, no. to say that. Yeah, no, you're not broke. You're, you're right. you owe somebody money at this point. Like you yeah. got, you got yeah. somebody coming to hunt you. <laughs> Cause think about it for yours. If you did the code, you paid a hundred dollars mm-hmm. to get in, you paid maybe to stay somewhere. Right. Then you had to pay to get the car back. So now you're like, it's like 1100, the opposite direction that you was trying to win the tournament. Mm-hmm. To pay two grand. Like now, like come come on like this is the nature of the the business that it is that is bass fishing the way it's set up it's set a, up, yeah. a weird it's a weird way but you do what you enjoy to do right. it's, it's, this is your life man this is like this is what it is this is what like it'd be the same thing if you however you want to look at whatever sports you in whatever you did whatever cost you paid it's the same it's no yeah. different it's just where you choose to put your put your time and your money there's some people they over it. So they just, just, they just hop out. They just start mm-hmm. picking out a little crappy boat, catching some to <laughs> get that little 12 footer going and just get, you know what I mean? It's not for everybody. It ain't. We're talking about co-angler from a tournament, tournament standpoint. Like it's not, it is not the life for everybody. Sometimes you gotta, it's, it's about who wants it more is what it comes down to. Cause there's sometimes where, um, this, I really want to dig into this, but if you get, uh, getting the, uh, fishing kind of stress free, so like you get where um, it's hard to do that in these tournaments in the BFLs because you never you get confirmed, you have a link, everything looks good to go, but then your link drops out. I'm gonna dig into this whole link thing when we get a little bit uh, probably episode after I get like four tournaments in, then I'm gonna dig into this link. We gonna get this <laughs> okay, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm looking I'm, I'm, I'm forward to it. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to come for that, but you get a link. You think you're good to go, then you get that message, hey buddy, I can't make it, I gotta work extra hours. <laughs> Your link's done, you get unconfirmed That's from the right. tournament, you now got a hotel, you got a rental car, you got an entry fee paid, and you don't even know if you're gonna go fishing that day at all. You done spent two hundred dollars like the dude told me on my live stream earlier, Bass Pro. I remember one tournament I bought a Blues American Hero the night before. Ready to run. I was like, this is my this is my first delve in the break base cast. So I got my bait cast. I, I was using the Walmart push button more. That's what I was using five years ago. I was using the Walmart push button, the one with the two piece that you got to put my tournament raw. <laughs> that thing had 10 pound red line on it, and I was throwing a frog and matted pads. I had no idea I was supposed to change the line. No one told me that crap. I didn't write it on the YouTube video. I didn't see that video. <laughs> the boater asked me, he was like, dude, is there some reason why you keep throwing that pole? Is that like a special pole? Does it have a meaning to you? I That's didn't funny. Know. I was like, That's are you funny. kidding me, bro? I was like, he because he was trying to figure out why I kept trying to throw that thing in the pads. And I was like, I said, this is what I caught my first bass on, man. I was flipping <laughs> a jig. That same 10-pound red line, I was flipping a jig trying to catch some fish up underneath the dock. I love that little red pole, man. I'm pretty sure it's in my garage still. My little two-piece. No, but that was what it was, and I'm like, that's funny. There's something, there's something to be said about the the cost for what, and just again, just, just like just who, who. Sometimes it comes down just to who wants it. You can get it done with what you got. You can complain right. about a bunch of shoulda, coulda, woulda, maybe if I could. But you get the link, you get all that stuff lined up, you're ready to rock, and then everything falls apart. I had it happen to me twice. I ended up having to stay in a place that was very interesting uh, <laughs> to stay at, and I'm like. Oh Lord Jesus! I was I had to borrow a car because the rental thing. I, I think I canceled that because I wasn't sure. So I ended up having to borrow a car. Thank God for my parents. They helped me out with the little car I could borrow. Drove down there, but now I'm driving my parents' car to a sketchy part of town, and I'm like, Oh man, this is. Good. I'm checking <laughs> on the car every hour. I'm going out looking outside, making sure. Good. Like, I cannot afford to mess up my daddy's car. He just, my daddy drive nice little Lexus. Can't afford to take this. I'm not explaining to him. That this thing got messed up. I'm not paying for it because I'm already in the hole. <laughs> the tournament, bro. I cannot right. nail to fix my daddy car as well um, because of criminals. So I'm like, this is this is insane. But again, I love fishing. You love fishing. So I'm gonna keep showing up. But I think at this point, I've kind of, I kind of got in an area where I'm gonna keep 
what the guy told me earlier. The main thing, the main thing, but I'm going to keep the main thing in perspective. There's no point. Fish eat Zoom trick worms. They eat Zoom finesse worms and they eat Senkos and they eat TRDs. I'm not going to go nuts on right. stuff for this for tackle for me this year. That's personally, I'm going to throw Texas rig beaver. Mm-hmm. Same. Um, and I'm throwing a, I'm throwing a drop shot. I will insert random drop shot bait, whatever it is needs to be. Same. Shake it. You don't have a choice to throw a shake it as a coin. You pretty much got to throw a shake it. <laughs> Everywhere you go, you got to have one somewhere. Mm-hmm. Eighth ounce. I throw a 16th ounce shaky head. That sucker f- floats like a um, like throwing a wacky rig sink on my boat. Mm-hmm. That's little, apparently that's that little river sneaky stuff. You just let it sink really slowly down. But um, I mean that's it. In a crankbait, like yeah. I, I'm like I can't. I'm I'm choosing to not complicate it this year. I, and that's why I spent the last three years just dialing in the stuff that works. And now that I got stuff that works, because we talked about that, and actually yeah. a little bit up. We're almost uh, almost at a. I, I say we give us a few more minutes, but I know we've, right. been, we've been working on tackle all day. I got my little box of goodies here. Uh, this box will be going. See, you right there. <laughs> this box will be going. I ain't bringing this crap with me nowhere. I'm not bringing anything in this box with me, I don't think. Um, but this is part of, again, so you look at it. We'll just do like this. If you if you ballpark estimate how much money is in one of these boxes, right? Like, it's. That you take your pick, man. Yeah, that's, not, yeah. Let's try that. Let's let's guess. If you if you had to guess, we got bull shads, the bill swimmers, me, four me, uh, mega bass uh, jerk baits, uh, three bolts of crank baits, some shadow wraps, uh, S waivers. S. Ooh. Yeah, we got. I mean, dude, this thing is chock full. Fritz sides. That might be. Five six hundred dollars plus, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to say it, yeah, that's five and six hundred dollars. You gotta realize, bro, he just said four megabytes jerk base. <laughs> Each of them <laughs> is after taxes twenty, almost twenty seven dollars, like twenty six right. something. Right. And the S waivers and the rest of that, nah. And right. first time, what first time is like well, twelve ninety nine or something and like that. that? Was, Come on, like man. The six dollars the bullshit. So you still got. Come this on, thing. man. That's like, like five hundred, six hundred dollars, somewhere around that. Answers, yeah. Because just them four megabytes is like almost a hundred dollars. That's just the freaking four. Nah, that's like five, six hundred dollars plus. Yeah, easy. <laughs> in, in one, and it's like you, <sighs> you gotta to say you're gonna spend money to go fishing. You're gonna spend. You're gonna spend the money to go. Like, but the the smart thing, like you said, is being. Man, like managing the expectation as far as what you're going to spend. Yeah. If you can know how to fix stuff yourself. If you can right. change, your, if you can do the stuff yourself. If you're out there and you're struggling, have a hard time, you can do it yourself. If you can retrieve baits, <laughs> no baits left behind. You got to keep these baits in the box. Just save yourself some money. So let's take a look at let's take a look at yours. So I show. Oh you, yeah. You so this is like my little juice, juice. It's not quite like complete yet but it's like i'm working on a dedicated box where i have a i'll give a couple pieces of juice i got some dedicated uh uh lures in here specifically tailored for the ohio river okay um and uh got my fridge sides springtime in may gotta gotta throw red Hold on, um, I, I ain't seen that. Yo, wait, what now? <laughs> that, I like that. That's, uh, it was moving too fast. I need to see that. Okay, I like that. Is it red and orange a little bit, or? Yeah, it is. It's got a okay. slight, slight hint of orange on the on the bottom. Okay. If you notice, you see it's like dark red right here, but up top, it's got like a little, little bit of orange up there. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay. Yeah, just a tea, that's, baby. That's gonna um, go to work. That's gonna go to work. That's look, that's mean. the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> And like you said, man's crankbaits. Y'all get y'all some of these, man. Y'all talk about OG Shallow War Killer. Did the baby? You got to. That's a beautiful color too of that thing right there. That's a. And then I got a pearl white. Oh man, I love that. I ain't got that. You got you pulling out the stuff. I ain't. You gonna make me go right? <laughs> I gotta go online. Yeah, you can't even look. You can't even get on Tackle Warehouse and get this color. No, I swear to God, I looked up yeah. trying to. You can't. I did not see it. They didn't have this color either. <laughs> hey, trust me, I, 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 I 
I wanted to reach out to them and see if I could just buy them. Like, are they yeah, available? Yeah, you I'm might like, oh, be able to go on their website and get those colors. But when I was on Tackle Warehouse, I, like, I did not see those. I got to be careful. Um, <laughs> and then I got some, uh, I'm going super finesse. I got some little baby bomber, fire okay. tiger up in there. Sure. Uh, this is evergreen. The PG5, it goes four to five feet. Look at the, 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 the bill on that, though. You get, so yeah. it get down, get down quick, man. Yeah, real quick. Right at five. Two, two, one turn, you right at I five. I got this, uh, it's like a natural, like, almost blue. It's slight, slightly translucent. You're going to see a little through. But uh, it's that, uh, here's a square bill. Okay. It's a little blue yellow color. Uh, and I got some sauce over there. I really don't want to show it, but I will Uh oh. Uh -oh, let y'all know. Hey, I'm, I'm going old school with something that... Progress. Rolling Crown's the podcast. We giving a little bit of that, little bit of that juice. If you you share one, I'll I'll, I'll grab, I'll grab one. I promise it won't be a uh, uh, a one point five strike can. Oh no! Here he goes. <laughs> look! Look! <laughs> oh man, he got it! He got it! Y'all be surprised. Dude. You are gonna pull just about everything out of the water, everything. but everything. but if you a coingler and you eat throwing a spinner bait, you desperate. Any body of water, mm -hmm. you throw that. This is a quarter ounce. You throw this beetle spin, you're going to catch. Oh, gee. All right. I'm going to have to get some, I'm gonna have to get them beetle spin tips from you. That's the one bait that I tell everyone that I caught all my fish on, but I'm playing. You keep playing. I know, right? Yeah, like, stop playing. You keep them, playing. What'd you, what'd you catch them on? I'll say a beetle spin, and they'll be like, dude, no, you didn't. Yeah, mm -hmm. but apparently I might be missing out. I, I I don't never I never will knock because I've seen and I done heard and I know and I know yeah 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 so that one I tried <laughs> to sneak out there earlier apparently everybody knew but don't nobody talk about there's a lot of those baits there's a lot of baits you hear people talk mm -hmm. about and then there's those ones they really catching them giants on that they don't you ain't gonna never get that information unless they're five unless they're Jacob Wheeler then you'll see because he's always there always catching something but um yeah no that's a uh, Dude, so that's awesome, man. We share share a couple things. Um, so we kind of want to um, kind of want to wrap up just a tad here because I do, I man, guys, I appreciate you all tuning in, um, tuning in. This is going to be available on everywhere that you can you can check out podcasts. Also, you're going to be able to see it live on the uh, YouTube as well, so you can actually see. Because I, I love to listen to podcasts, and usually while I'm working, I'll let them play. But there is something about seeing seeing the expression, seeing people talking about, especially when it comes to fishing and you see people that are passionate about fishing, they just love fishing as much as you do. So it's like, it's really phenomenal to see. So that's why I'm putting it across all the ones to see. But I do want to start, guys. I know I didn't do it in my first episode. And the only reason why I didn't do it is because I was talking to myself, okay? So I don't <laughs> like to ask myself a question about myself to talk to myself. I didn't want to do that. So we got a guest on today. Jason, you've been amazing, man. We certainly appreciate you on here. I do want to... Uh, I got one question for you. I'm gonna ask um, as we wrap things up here, and be sure, okay. guys, to to heed some of these tips, man. Like the, when giving out this stuff, man. I'm trying to tell you, like the goal is to help. I I always tell a lot of my friends when I'm talking to them about fishing, we can fish. You can finish in first. I'll finish in second. Right. But the way we get there, and obviously, typically, I probably flip that scenario around, but. Depends on, like, uh, but I, I'm all for, like, I want us both to do well. That's what I'm getting at. I want us both to do well. So my goal is to always share. Um, I'll give you guys one other thing I have. I have a lot of group chats going on regarding the bodies of water that I'm going to be fishing. And we talk in those chats and we share information, tips, tricks. What did you catch them on? What did you catch them on? I get all of that information in off season. When it's time to rock, I pull and compile the list of all the data I have put it all in my brain. And then that's how I go about proceeding with the water. So a lot of them guys did it. One of the guys did it this year and you're not supposed to get information in off limits periods, but you have to yeah. understand the rules regarding where you're fishing. If you're fishing a BFL, there is no off limits, man. These dudes talk. The reason why they like the Friday night meetings and the reason why some guys are mad about not going to the in-person ones is because they're used to talking to each other in person, getting the spots. Dude, were you catching them in this Creek? Nah, mm -hmm. man, I went in there. Monday and Tuesday, I spent eight, 12 hours and I didn't catch nothing. They like to have those conversations. And when you don't have the in-person meeting, you can't have that conversation. You can't find out with it. When you do Zoom, Zoom call ends, unless you 
guys talk all the time, you can't get that information. So for us to be sharing it out here where you can go back and watch it again, Jason gave you all absolute fire about that research. Some of the most helpful videos that I've seen about bodies of water are the guy with nine subscribers. Mm -hmm. And he has like a 27 minute video where he breaks down everything because he's trying to get his he's trying to get his algorithms right. He's trying mm -hmm. to get the numbers, trying to get himself up there. So he's giving out everything. And then you go watch that main guy video that everybody's watching. Dude, don't do nothing but play a bunch of music. And he's just setting the hook, setting the hook, setting, and then he gets done. He's like, yeah, man, whacked him another day off the river, man. That was great. And I'm like, dude, what is, what, am, what am I supposed to zoom in and try to catch the stuff? Like, oh, he cuts all the dishes coming up. That's junk. Do you like this? Go put your time in, man. Get, make Sometimes make you a playlist. Mm -hmm. Find the body of water you want to make a playlist and let that sucker run. And just watch what you can. Tune in. I've seen every some videos where that that guy will say one thing at minute number fifteen and seven seconds. He say one thing that I take, and I can run with that thing, and it'll it'll be like the best thing you have ever. So guys, good information coming. I hope you guys are uh, tuning in. Keep tuning in. We're gonna have some more. Pretty sure we're gonna bring Jason back around because I love talking to the dude. So, man. He's, yeah, uh, man, it's good he's times, a good times, man. We'll bring him back around. Good we'll probably times. do a little bit early. I don't know if y'all can tell. We both a little tired been a long a week, little bit yeah. <laughs> but then, so if y'all see me a little bit man it's been a long six days a week seven days a week straight it's been it's peak season for where i work at jason work he staying busy man so you gotta get that money y'all know yeah yeah do it now y'all do it remember now the box remember the five hundred dollar box you gotta go you do gotta it go. now but um i'm gonna ask jason um if you could pick one person whether we're talking celebrity, whether we're talking uh, angler, we're talking okay. football player, we talk any of these type of things. If you got one person that you could go, that you could go fishing with, so we're we're like what? It don't really matter. Where we're talking Chloe Kardashian, we talking, <laughs> we're talking, uh, we're talking uh, Mookie Betts. Like it don't it don't matter. Wherever you're at, wherever you're thinking um, for that, if you got one person that you could go fishing with uh, in the water, who would that be? And if you can tell, maybe wh why you would want to fish with that particular person. I have to say, Randy Moss, dude. You got, you okay. got, got to check okay. out his Instagram, dude. Like I said, okay. man, that dude is—he's a hammer on the water. He was a hammer on the field, yeah. and I, I really want to see him get into like opens. I don't. Does he fish the opens? I mean, I don't know if he does, but I'd love to see does. him like venture off because I feel like he run up some numbers. I don't know, dude. Looks like he—he he knows what he's doing, like. Real good, but he yeah. actually he's oh. been fishing before football. I don't know. He grew up fishing. He oh, eats okay, fish okay. all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got yeah. He grew. He loves fishing, as y'all can see. But I feel like if I partner up with him, we have a good time. Even if it wasn't like a top ten or whatever, I feel like if I paired up with him, the opens it would be like probably the best day of fishing I've ever had in my be. life. I, I agree. I really I, feel I like it like, would. I think so. I think so. That's why. I think what we do is after the podcast, I'm gonna air it. This absolutely, guys, let me tell you, this episode is going to air on Tuesday, 7.30. Every episode I do is going to be on Tuesday at 7.30, so I'm going to be consistent with that. That way I know you guys can tune in and check it out. But Tuesday at 7.30. So what I'm going to do, I don't know if Jason's going to do the same, we're going to hit Randy Moss up. We got a podcast now. We got him, right? so <laughs> That'd be we're, dope. We're, we're big time. Like he's, I ain't got that much, pool. <laughs> I got to post gonna more. <laughs> we're going to say, Randy Moss, we would like to go fishing with you. When are you going to Ohio? Uh... Or you coming over somewhere in between? Right. We'll meet him. We'll meet him. We'll that <laughs> right. We want to go fishing. I know he got a. I'm pretty sure he got a boat. Got a nice boat. We'll go fishing with Randy Moss. We're gonna hit him up. We're gonna see see if we can connect. Tag him in some clips and see right. um, see if he want to get out here and see if he want to do some fishing. See if he want to catch catch some of these bands. Get these six seven pounders. Some small mouth. He probably would love that man. Yeah. Probably, oh probably yeah. Can't can't knock down that. You're gonna love some small mouth fishing. Oh, so, yeah. That is awesome. Randy Moss, NFL player, great, and now announcing. I do I do like when they announce. It's just it's a different thing about hearing somebody that actually was out there putting in work mm -hmm. um announcing. I really do like that. There's some like Stephen A that yeah, can okay. he's got a new podcast that they give you a take that's either gonna piss you off or you're gonna be like, Yeah, dude, that's it. You got it. But otherwise he's just gonna piss you off. I don't mind him. I actually I don't I like listening to some of his takes, but um I do <laughs> like something about hearing hearing a dude that got it in and went to work that you probably watched on TV talking about sports that you like, that you're watching at that time. I really do like 
I really do like that personally. Um, for me, so Randy Moss, angler, he's right out here with us, football player. That's 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 awesome, and that's super cool. So, um, we got a couple of things we're gonna do, guys. Be sure to check out. Um, I'll leave a link to Jason, uh, his social in the description. Give him a follow. Follow his journey. He's gonna be fishing this year, Buckeye Division, starting on the wonderful but not really Ohio river and then getting better. Cause he's going, you're going to Erie. Yes. Thank God. Yeah, going we're going to me. He's going, he's going, he's got to get through the struggle. Once he gets through the struggle, he's going, then it's going to be time to time to get it, um, get it in. But he's already got some stuff bait, some stuff playing. So be sure to follow along. You guys can check out the weigh-ins. Um, you can watch the land while the weigh-ins live. I'm sorry. Just cheer, cheer on, man. These guys that I'm bringing on the podcast, man, just, just cheer them, cheer them. Man, they are here. They are here putting in this work, man. Enjoying doing their thing so be sure to support um connect with them as well and i'm pretty sure jason may not mind me saying this but if you got some fishing questions and you hit it his way yeah go ahead ahead and slide man just 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 hit him he'll he'll send you something he's gonna tell you what it is he ain't ain't gonna give you no no you know crap he's gonna tell you what it is (laughs) and then he's probably gonna give you something funny he's gonna make you laugh too he's he's he's, he's really good he says some stuff that had me Cause I'll press, uh, I'll send a message and I'll press play on it. I'm like, dude, I'm dying laughing. I'm like, crap. Everybody's looking like, dude, what has happened? I'm like, dude, this is so he, he's just a good dude, man. Which is why I, I felt like it's very important to get him on the podcast. I got a lot of, um, hopefully, some, some great people coming on um, very soon. But I'm definitely thankful for you, Jason, for coming on. Taking oh, the man, it was my on. pleasure, man. Appreciate my pleasure. You. Um, so Appreciate as always, you having me. I'm gonna try to give uh, I'm gonna try to give you coin was a, a very successful tip to send you on your way. I wanted to be positive. I wanted to be encouraging. I want everybody to feel good about it. So co-anglers, am I signing off? All co-anglers, make sure that you bring all the tackle that you have in your living room when you go to every BFL. Make sure you fill up the boat so full that you and your boater can't even walk. <laughs> you know leave you right at the rim. <laughs> <laughs> you not even get. Make sure you bring a big oh, black man. trash bag with every tackle box that you got. That's going to do that. And then, uh, okay, probably don't heed any of my advice at that particular time. I'm messing with you all. That's that's like a funny. I'm trying to get you guys hip to this coin with world. There's a lot of things. I was that guy. I bought all my stuff and I got in the boat and the guy was like, I know somebody <laughs> that can beat you with two worms. <laughs> he went, and I was like, that's kind of rude, right? I, I don't know <laughs> Are you being so disrespectful? That's not cool. But he was like, I know a guy that can use two worms and he will beat the brakes off of you. And you got a tackle bag that, I mean, we're talking like this junk was loaded with tackle. I'm trying to do this kind of stuff. And he was like, so my tip is guys don't do that. Listen to me and Jason's tips. Get, do your research, do your homework. So that way, when you get to the water, you're not bringing all that junk. You dialed, you know what to expect when you get there adapt, make it happen, and you guys are knocking out the park. Trust me, I'm going to keep giving you all the information I can. Jason gave you some great information. Appreciate you tuning in. As always, unless you got something else, Jason, I'm going to catch you No, no, I'm, I'm set, man. I'm all good, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you Appreciate having you, me, bro. Yes, sir. Thanks again, man, and I will catch you guys on the next one.